Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by Market5. I'm your co-host, Joel Elkanen, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have Serge Berger on the line. He's head trader, investment strategist at The Steady Trader. Serge, how are you doing on this Monday morning? Joel, good morning. Happy Monday. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, quite a day on Friday in the markets here, and it looks like I uh, have a little bit of a hangover. S&P uh, futures uh, trading down here, 1375 here. Trading range surge, is that still what we have? We uh, had the Greek uh, nonsense. It took us down. We went right back to the all-time highs, exactly make a double top here. Are you still feeling like, you know, maybe you don't need to step in until we get to the bottom end of the trading range, S&Ps, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the 2040 level? Yeah, it's. I read this morning somewhere, and it's, it's obvious, but someone declared this is the longest – and tightest trading range ever in the S&P. Now, you know, I'm not going to go back, you know, all to, to and say all time, but it certainly has felt extremely frustrating. So, you know, classically, we had another uh, OPEX uh, rally uh, into um, two weeks ago, and that marked the top. <laughs> and then we are just now right back down to the lower end of the range. And I think you can try to play this for a bounce. I think the more we find resistance up there, and if you look at the velocity to the downside has become, you know, a little bit more ferocious the last couple times around. So I think, you know, you play it for a bounce, but you don't go all in. You, you still go with the assumption that I think we're going to go lower before we go higher. Okay. All right. Now, I know you like to look at uh, different things to, you know, give you your feel for the market. And uh, one thing you like to keep an eye on is um, monthly index uh, op options expirations here. And I'm <laughs> trying, like, mouthful there. I'm trying to pull out the chart here. And uh, the one that we have here in front of our listeners, it says all arrows here, these blue arrows, Mark monthly equity option expiration days, and you say uncanny. So, talk about the chart here, and uh, perhaps uh, what traders can use this for moving forward. Sure. For one, there's a typo in there, so my I typed in what an expirati, and you know, I don't know, maybe that's the Italian influence. <laughs> so, basically, what this is is it's a giving people a little bit of perspective. Of what we've seen all year, we've seen you know these these sort of uh, low volume bounces into options expiration Fridays. Uh, and then those have more or less than within a few days marked the tops before we saw um, mean reversion move lower each and every time, <laughs> every, every, uh, every month. And that's, you know, uh, it's a little bit nutty to think of this, but it does show you that a lot of the rallies this year have been a little bit options expiration driven. You know, it's for me kind of just pointing out another way of saying, listen, market breadth here just sucks, <laughs> you know, to okay. put it to put it plain and simple. And this game can't go on forever. And I think from a pure price action perspective and taking all the other things in consideration, a swoosh lower, you know, through a couple month lens. And I've said this now for a while, if and when it comes, will do a whole lot of good to this market to then be able to buy it into year end. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point on the options uh, expirations. Just, you know, funny thing, funny things happen like that. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's, you know, actual turns in the market. Uh, boy, let's talk about the uh, the IBB here. I mean, Biogen just gets whacked here. <laughs> uh, I mean, until then, you know, the, the, uh, the IBB index has been, you know, holding up pretty well here but now you gotta you see a major trend line that's uh held pretty much since going back to q1 of uh 2014 here is biogen gonna drag down the ibb so i, I wrote about this this morning and i and i always say listen this is an etf so it's an etf that is made so the, the top five largest stocks in that etf make up 40 percent of it Okay, and you can, and you, we all know mm -hmm. those stocks are the Biogen, the Gilead Sciences, the Regenerons, all those guys. So, three out of those five stocks are about to report earnings this week and early next week. Uh, two of them already did. Uh, Biogen, obviously, last Thursday or after the bell, I assume, given Friday's uh, disaster. So, it's a really critical area. And, um, you know, obviously, in the weekly chart, we had an essentially a bearish reversal candle on Friday. Uh, on the daily chart, you see a gap down on Friday in the IBB. I think it's make or break. 
I'm not saying biotech's going to fall apart, but it's been, you know, one of the things that's been holding up the the entire healthcare sector and the healthcare sector in turn has been one of the few horsemen that held up the broader market. Take out this leg and the market's got a lot less to hold on to. All right. Um, also at the bottom of this chart, let me pull it up here. You have, um, this keeps maximizing on me. You have the uh, RSI and the uh, in the Wilder here, and you got a bar uh, driven in here. I'm going to move it up so our folks can see it. Uh, explain what that is and how you figure in, figure it into your trading. Are you you have the IBB chart up? Is that right? I still do. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking. Okay. I'm trying to get the bottom of it here with uh, <laughs> the RSI and the Wilder. Yeah, as, as added an RSI, I assume. So it, it just we have a lot of negative divergence. So the, the way the way I look at the markets, and this is not something I use for for near term trading, but more for you know sort of structural stuff. Um, if you look at um, March of 2015, which is where we saw the previous high uh, in the IBB, we made a higher high in the RSI, but uh, uh, the week prior to last week we actually made a lower high, or maybe it was actually last week, made a lower high versus those highs in uh, in momentum, so in the RSI. And so uh, uh, so you have negative divergence versus price, which made a higher high. So we had a higher high on lower momentum. To me, you know, again, it's it, this is not an instant sell signal, but you have, you combine that with a bearish reversal candle, all the earnings that are coming out, you know, the, the, the disaster that we saw in Biogen last Friday, and we're... I feel I would feel more comfortable, maybe trying out a, a shy short or selling some 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 uh, out of the money call spreads in this space. Yeah, I wish you would have sent me that chart last week. Holy macro! <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't really materialize until was, Friday. Oh did yeah. It? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on here. Let's see if I can make this chart a little bit bigger here. Um, but this is the one starting with uh, Google, Netflix, and Amazon here. What are you picking up in these issues? <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's it's you know I, I hate to sort of state the obvious, but you know obviously we have three three of them frolicking vertically higher after earnings, after already running up steeply into earnings. I mean, Google, the Google was up like what ten percent into earnings the week prior, and then rallied another what 18 20 percent or something on earnings day uh and all those have been lower a little bit uh, amazon was a beauty to short uh or sell call spreads uh, against uh, on friday morning as i did so i just think the point is a lot of these stocks uh have gone and, and taken the rate of change to to unsustainable levels um and again these are stocks that from a market cap perspective and also from a sentiment perspective have held things up and made and and prettified, if that's a word, uh, the chart, the, the broader market uh, uh, movements. Uh, whereas in reality, it's just that uh, kind of put uh, some some lipstick on a pig, which I think needs to just mean revert lower. And the, if these stocks come down, then you know again another leg, as I said before, biotech will be taken out. Right, and uh, you know, and I think I mentioned this earlier in the show. I mean that you know the swing from a profit and a loss. I think in Amazon was like a hundred and fifty or one hundred sixty million dollar swing, and that's yep. all it's took to make that big change. And uh, how many billions of dollars did they add in market cap on that one move? I mean, you gotta be kidding me. It's uh, yeah. yeah, I got a, I had a little fun in the weeklies. Uh, in um, in Amazon, I wish I would have. Nice. Got, I wish I would have gotten down. I mean, the five. Actually, I looked and off the open, the five fifty puts. Well, mm -hmm. they traded down at fourteen cents. Fourteen. Wow. Yeah, fourteen. <laughs> and then of course I let it drop quite a bit before I get to five thirty five. So I had to pull my hair out a little bit to get it into money, but. Uh, Boy, oh boy, there's, you know, you can yeah. get some decent risk reward ratios there when, uh, you know, of course, if it would have kept on going back over 600, whatever, they would have been useless. But uh, another thing I noticed about those things is that, you know, it's not it's not people making the markets, it's bots making the markets. And if, you know, Absolutely. you want to get in, even though those things are thin and kind of wild, man, if you want in, you know, I mean, they, they trade these things with size. So, uh Interesting move there. Uh, let's uh, let's take just move over to the big dog here. Apple, uh, good was not good enough. I don't think we've had you on since they had their earnings. Uh, I mean, can you can you really be getting 
you know, really active in the stock on the long side here after, I mean, if they didn't go up after a good earnings report surge, what, what's going to send this market higher or send Apple higher? No. Sure, exactly. But, you know, it's, it's and I'm going to come out sounding like a, tr like a broken track record again. It, 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 it's the same thing. Uh, um, I said this when the, when this, when they had their developers conference, if it's not going to be earnings, season then it's going to be you know if it's not going to be if the stock can't move then it's going to have to be earnings season of course now we have this crazy rally with based on google and the stocks back then apple is basically just as far as i'm concerned from a more tactical perspective it's just dead money you, you can day trade this thing for sure but if you're trying to do something here a little bit more you know multi-week wise it's just really difficult and it just reflects the broader market um one thing that i that i I have tried to do is I, I also sell some some out of the money call spreads against it near the highs. It just that's just resistance. Maybe I'll see if I can sell some out of the money put spreads a little bit lower. So you know maybe lock it in. Some, yeah, just a little bit of a what was an iron condor I think is a technical term. Um, that kind of stuff you know. But I I don't want to chase it lower yet. It's just needs to give me a defined lower high first, and I just am a little skeptical of it all you know. Okay. All right. We have uh we have. It's just a bevy of earnings coming out this week. We've already had some uh, big dogs report, but, boy, this week is uh, nothing shy of uh, hundreds of earnings reports here. Uh, let's just take a look at a couple of Tuesday after the close. Twitter. Low expectations for Twitter. <laughs> Low expectations of the stock. They've been tagging this thing since the last report. Uh, how you leaning going into the Twitter earnings on Tuesday after the close? Yeah, you know, I mean, full disclosure, we've, we've tossed this name back and forth, I think, almost every time I'm on, and it's, a, I'm, I'm still long from 39, I bought it after last earnings report, I mean, a little bit later, and, you know, it's just a small position, but still, I, I still think, you know, to me, it's more of a lottery ticket, um, I, you know, I think the risk is that they come out and say, listen, uh, we have, we're hiring a new CEO, <laughs> which would kind of take the entire takeover thing uh, off the table, Um but I, it's just, it's just hard to trade, man. It's just like a lot of the other things you said. It's just unless you're day trading this, maybe you can straddle a little bit or whatever you want to do. But I don't know. I mean, you, you got anything on this? I just, you know, I've just it, been. It's I, lottery I, I just been in. I, I'm kind of. I just got this kind of bull case in it. You know, I just kind of, and it, it's been wrong. <laughs> but um, mm. I've been able to, you know, trade around the position. So even though I've been buying it since higher levels, I'm not down on it. So. I mean, I'm not going to go short into it. I will take some kind of lotto, you know, look on the upside here, but uh, not a lot of optimism. I think that, you know, when the uh, the benefits from the Google contract, I a little disappointed Google didn't mention them. They, I think they mentioned Etsy or something during the report, and that stock went crazy here. But um, I think that there's good, you know, eventually I think this is going to be a turnaround, but uh, just... Not sure it's going to be this quarter. Um, also reporting, uh, we have reporting on Wednesday after the close, Facebook. I mean, big run up in the earnings here, high expectations, holding up pretty well over the last couple of sessions. Uh, any outlook on Facebook? I think it's the same thing. What I would like to do, I'm not going to go into with any position into this thing, but what I would like to do is if we get a similar price reaction as we saw in Netflix and some of the other guys, I would love to just you know sell out of the money calls against this stock. I, I, I like the stock through a longer term lens, but it's again the rate of change has been extremely steep. You know we're up from you know 80 uh, just a while ago. Now we're we tagged to almost 100, 100 last yep. week. I would love to short it or, or certainly sell call spreads against it uh, after earnings if we get a pop. Come and get me, right? If you uh, talk to Nick yep. Shaheen about that, and when things get extreme, you know, selling call spreads, you know, not the greatest wish reward ratios, but uh, at least you get, uh, you know, you know where your loss is and kind of get that time to decay working a, a, against you as well. Uh, just moving on, just I know you like to talk about the financials and, uh, Bank America here has been doing its best to hold up. I'm look, I'm just looking at this $18 level in it. Uh, finally lost it today. Hung in there well on Friday. Uh, what's your outlook? Big rally up from uh, the you know the lower 16s up or oh, over 18. Uh, what you looking at in Bank America, Serge? Same dynamics, right? Massive rally. 
uh, actually just a little bit before earnings, then in follow through uh, buying after earnings. Uh, and at some point it just fades out. You know, it's just that the broader market participation is not there to hold these things up. You know, so we've now talked about uh, some of the large cap tech. We've now talked about the financials and we talked about uh, IBB, i.e. NASDAQ, uh, biotech slash healthcare. These are the three things maybe tossed in consumer discretionary that have held, held up the market and all of them are now starting to come off. Um, you know, so just t t take with that what you will, you know, what you want. But I think that's. That should tell us something. Serge, don't give me any more bearish than I already am here. I want you to, <laughs> I want you to come in and buy the dip. You got to get me uh, a little turned around here. No, I mean, it's uh, sell-off continues here in the S&Ps, folks. We are down 17 and three-quarters points at 2059.75. Uh, just no bounce set here. Uh, lows 59.50. We're trading here right off the lows for the session. Uh, base the daily charts here, folks. July 13th. That was I had a low at 2. Oh, five to eight handles away here. Uh, let's see if we can get there. Um, moving on, just a few other stocks. I just want to touch base with you. Have earnings uh, later in the week. Tesla, has that uh, been on your radar at all? Less so. It's just been a frustrating stock to trade again for my for my time frame. So I've I've kind of taken it off the radar. But I would probably do the same thing here if we if you know if, if we if we get a a big a big pop after earnings if. Again, I would like to sell call spreads against it, considering where, where you know where the stock has come from um, over the past um, over the past few months, and if it consolidates lower, you know, I, you know, there's obvious support near the 200-day kind of thing. But I you know it's I, I look at the market more in a holistic you know way right now, and I see that the correlations have kind of gone up, and and uh, you know if the S and P drops, it's, you know I just had a call before from a the CIO of a, a big private bank, and he you know he, he was talking about the homies, the home builders, and I was like, dude, <laughs> if the market drops, you know even those things are going to hold up. So you know to me, it's more of a risk management exercise right now, and and see how some of these things that we just talked about, some of these momentum things that have held up, uh, and recently came down again, how those are going to react when the market turns down if the market turns down are you going are you going for this head faking gold here uh broke down to that uh multi-year low at uh 1135 area dipped under 1080 i know uh barons tried to give it uh, a positive twist here about capitulation here um i mean if it's not going to go i mean it has a rally today but uh any drivers to take gold back up or just are we heading for triple digits um, you know what I'm thinking? I'm, I'm thinking very near term here. And, you know, the Barron's thing certainly is, is, is interesting, uh, although that's more, you know, old, old Wall Street stuff to read Barron's at this point. But nonetheless, um, I think there's some interesting price action last Friday. Um, what I will point out, what's interesting to me is if you look at the gold versus the gold miners ratio, um, it's basically exploded high, which is to say that gold, even though it's down, has dramatically outperformed in a relative term to gold miners. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think that spread has ever been that high. So if anything, right now I want to buy gold miners versus gold because even in relative terms, that those things have gotten weak. Um, that's just my two cents on that. Okay, and uh, crude oil here uh, down 63 cents. Uh, had to rally up over 60, trading down again today. Boy, I'll have to take a look. We might be getting, <clears throat> I know the contracts roll over. Uh, I guess we got a ways to go. We got into the 44 handle here. Anything to turn around the crude oil market? I um, think it's the dollar. You know, you, you got to look at the dollar dynamics again there. I, I, I think crude too has gotten very hard to trade, to be honest with you. I think we had much more fun on the way down late last year, where now the trading ranges are again so tight. Um, but look at the dollar. I mean, and the dollar this morning is it still is it still a little bit uh, heavy? Let's see. Yeah, down 80 basis points. So so that that correlation doesn't work anymore either. You know, I don't really have an opinion on gold right now on oil right now. Is my, yeah. is my point. Hard I, to buy. You know, I, I would love to see the inverse versus the dollar work, but it's not working. So yeah, yeah, it's hard to hard to buy it when it's going down like this. Uh, we've yeah. been on we've been on the line with Serge Berger. He is a head investment strategist head trader and investment strategist at the steady trader joins us every monday give his take on the market serge thanks a lot have a good week and uh we'll be talking to you again next monday
Thanks, Joe. Have a good week.